YouTube. Welcome to Geek Shh. So ever since I started reviewing hubs on my channel, a lot of companies reached out to me about sending me units to review, and I've turned almost all of them down. But when the cases reached out to me about this particular unit, I knew this was the one that I wanted to present to my channel, whether you were subscribed or not. Make sure you subscribe, by the way. Today, we're taking a look at the Cases M4 40 gigabytes per second enclosure docking station. Now the unit itself feels the exact same way as it looks. Absolutely amazing. Taking on the same form factor as the latest Mac Pros from Apple while being made out of aluminum alloy. Now measuring the unit, you're looking at a little over five inches in length, a little under three and a half inches in width, and from the feet to the top of the handles, a little under seven inches. In terms of weight, it's coming in at around 888 grams. So let's go ahead and put that to the side for a second and get back to looking at what also is in the box. So first we have the power brick, which is the PD 30 watt. Now, speaking of wattage, this unit hovers around 2.3 watts when your Mac mini is asleep, 6.1 watts when it's at idle and also under 11 watts at load. Now, also in the box, you get a three foot USB-C cable for the PDW30. You then get yourself a T9 screwdriver, which unfortunately is not magnetic. Then you get yourself a six inch Thunderbolt 4 cable. And you also get a packet with four very thick thermal pads and also two inserts to hold your NVMe drive in place. And last but not least, you get one of the most important items in this box, which is a manual, which I highly suggest everyone to read before using this unit. So on top of the docking station, you have both a SD card and micro SD card readers, both providing the highest speed, which is 4.0 each. Perfect. On the side of the unit, you have a black button, which is used to power on and off the M4 Mac Mini. Now on the back, you have the host port for the Thunderbolt cable, two display ports, which support up to 4K each, and the power port, which is labeled PD. We also have three USB 3.1 ports in the front, as well as a power button. So let's go ahead and take out the screw under the cases label, which will reveal the two 20 gigabyte per second NVMe slots. I'll be utilizing two SN770 NVMe drives that I have available for this review. Then we're gonna go ahead and use the inserts that we mentioned earlier to secure the drives. Then we're gonna peel the plastic off the pads and then double them up for cooling and reattach the side panel. So now let's go ahead and unscrew the bottom four screws so we can release the bottom of the unit. Then we're gonna go ahead and take our M4 Mac Mini and slide it in gently. Then after that, we could go ahead and screw those four screws back in to secure it. So this part is very important. Do not plug in the Thunderbolt cable and the power cable and then power on the unit. No, you have to first plug in the power cable, power on the unit, and then plug in the Thunderbolt cable. If you do them all at the same time, then the hub might start drawing its power from the M4 Mac Mini instead of drawing its power from the power brick. All right, guys. So now that we're on the desktop, let's go ahead and do a speed test. So we're gonna do a five gig speed test. Let's do one of the drives. They're both the same drive, SN770. And as you can see right here, we're pulling around 1400 megabytes per second and 1500 megabytes per second on the read. You gotta remember, this is 20 gigabytes per second. Now, if you wanna go to 40 gigabytes per second, then you have to put it into the RAID mode. So we're gonna go into this utility that we have right here, go up to file, go down to RAID assistant. Now, right here, you see the three RAID modes. You have RAID 0, RAID 1, and JBOD. So RAID 0, which is striped, is what we wanna go to. It splits data evenly across two or more disks without parity of information. 
with speed as the intended goal. So that's how we basically gonna double our speed. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and press next. We're gonna choose the drives. And also what you wanna do here, if you have more drives plugged in, you wanna unplug the drive, whatever external drives that you do not plan to use in RAID because you don't wanna confuse yourself at the end of the day and end up RAIDing the wrong drive. So these are the two drives that I wanna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue. Right here, you could call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it RAID zero. All right, and then we're gonna put it to APFS. And when it comes to chunk size, if you have bigger files that you plan put it on, plan to put on there, then go ahead and go up to 256. If you're just gonna be putting regular size, size files on there, small size files, then put it on 16 or 32K. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on 256K. And then we're gonna go ahead and create the rate. one hard drive dies, then you lose the data on both hard drives. So let's go ahead, now that we got it at rate zero, let's go ahead and do a speed test again. Let's select the drive, going down to rate zero, and we should double in speed. See, there we go. We're closer to the 40 gigabytes per second at this point. So we're pulling 2700, right? and are close to 2,700 on read. Now, I wanna show you something here. Now, with the if you're utilizing the display port, if you're utilizing the display ports in back of the hub, it's going to affect the speeds that you get when you're, when you're doing RAID zero for 40 gigabytes per second. So right now I have it at 60 Hertz. Let's, let me go ahead and put it up to like 140, right? So now let's run the speed test again. Like we, we should still be on the same drive, RAID zero. Let's do the speed test now. You see how we took a dip in performance because we now raised our Hertz up. So right wise, we took a dip in performance. So that's what happens when it, it really affects it because that's a lot of functionality going through one Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt cable. So that's why that's happening. So you gotta be on the lookout for that. So let's say you wanna get rid of this raid. You don't wanna use this one no more. You could just go down here to where it says delete raid and you could just go ahead and delete the raids. Let's say you wanna go over to raid one or just leave the raids regular. So right here is uninitialized. So what you wanna do is just go ahead and hit the erase call it whatever you want. I'll call it one and APFS. Go ahead and race it. And now you basically unrated yourself. So put this to two APFS. All right, so now you're back to normal, just two there's two discs. Now, if you wanna go ahead and go to, you still could go ahead and go to Mirrored, which is RAID 1 or JBOD. Personally, I think Mirrored is the best one to go with under these circumstances, because if you pop in two two terabyte uh, NVMe drives or two four terabyte or two eight terabyte, you always will have a copy of whatever data that you put on there. Now you gotta remember when it comes to hard drives, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when, the hard drives will die. They all will die eventually. So RAID 1 is considered one of the favorites out there. So now when it comes to Wi-Fi, you're going to be able to connect to your router, but you're going to take a massive hit in speeds. This is due to the M4 Mac Mini being totally surrounded by aluminum alloy. Now this unit does not affect your speeds when you're hardwired via an ethernet cable. You also got to remember if you're using Wi-Fi for airdrop continuity, et cetera, et cetera, you don't need to be necessarily connected to a network. You just have to have your Wi-Fi turned on as well as your Bluetooth to utilize those features. So 
So all in all, I was immediately mesmerized by this docking station. I think it was an amazing idea to combine the form factor of the Mac Pro and a hub together. The unit has proper ventilation for air intake for the bottom of the M4 Mac Mini. I love the idea of not including a fan so you could passively cool the NVMe drives by transferring the heat the drives produce to the thick thermal pads and then to the rigid aluminum cover so it can passively cool the drives and the operation of your M4 Mac Mini can remain silent. I also think it took forward thinking to come up with this idea and push forward to make it a reality. But there's a few things I have to speak about before I can actually close out this video. Number one, if you're utilizing a display port, every time you restart your M4 Mac Mini, you will then have to power off the hub and power it back on before you will see an image pop up on your monitor screen. That can be problematic for some people out there. Number two, if you plug in an SD card or a micro SD card and at the top of this unit, or even if you use like an adapter to plug in like a SSD or even the SD card again in one of the front USB 3.1 ports, those will be ejected immediately every time your M4 Mac mini goes to sleep. So that also can be problematic for a lot of people out there. Number three, even though they have instructions in the manual, let's be honest here, a lot of people do not take time to read manuals. So I think they need to plaster the instructions for how to power up the hub on the box somewhere to let people know that's how it has to be. Because if you do not take time to power it the, the proper way, you will find yourself drawing power from your M4 Mac mini rather than the power brick. And last but not least, number four, which is not really a major issue to me, but all these hubs basically have these Wi-Fi issues. So I expect it these days, but at the end of the day, I have to take time to let my subscribers know that they exist as well. So with that being said, all the Kickstarter information will be in the description and you can go ahead and read it. I believe it's going to be $100 for the first 100 people uh 129.99 for the 300 people after that and it's going to be regular priced at 149.99 now when companies send me out products they're sending it to me to do a thorough review and i cannot in good conscience not let my subscribers know everything not only the positives but also the negatives so they can make a conscious decision when they're moving forward with the items that they want to purchase with their hard-earned money anyway it's DeMarco Payne for Geek Shh. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And last but not least, may the good news be yours.